my juicy co-creators, Lilu here from beautiful, amazing Santa Barbara in California with Robert. Hello, Robert. Hello, Lilu. How are you? Yeah. <laughs> it's a great it's good to hear an Australian accent here in America and California. You love it here. I do. This is one of the greatest places we've ever been, and uh, we've really settled in. Yeah, it's with Barbara. Yeah. Yeah, she's sitting across there watching us, of course. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> beautiful souls here i'm very excited to, to to see you and meet you again and have this conversation because um a lot of things are happening across the world right now and on this planet uh, shifts are going on people are really opening up to this can we say it's a new energy coming in or or it has always been there really it's a lot more than just a new energy uh the whole electromagnetic field around people has changed And so that's just like um, you change the water in the fish bowl, all the fish get better. You don't have to fix any of the fish. So what's happening is the electromagnetic field is being changed so that everybody feels okay. And that's why everyone's experiencing a new, new phase of life. But, 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 but some people or some of us are having it rough, though. Oh, that's not rough. It's rough to stay where you are. Okay. It's not rough if you go with it. So it's, it's like, if you get on top of the wave, you can have a really good time. If you go into the wave and struggle, you'll have a hard time. So in fact, that wave of circumstances happening now, and if you can just lighten up and get on top of it, um, you don't even worry what's in the wave. Yeah. And it'll carry you to a whole new place. How do you do that, Robert? The main thing is to know that you can The, there's no uh, method for any one person, but each person knows how. It's just like uh, I used to talk about being under the trampoline or on top of it. And I'd say to people, you know, you can have either. Just get on top of the trampoline. They'd say, oh, okay. Never asked how. They walk away happy. Because it's that visual that allows you to actually use the powers that belong to you. It's not the uh, method that allows you to use your abilities. If so there's I, really nothing wrong with us? Not at all. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, th I think when people ask that question, they're relating it to everything around them. So just change what's around you. And you don't have to physically pull everything down, you just decide to change it. And the second that uh, something comes into your field that satisfies you, you change it anyway. You know, you get a new lover, Your life changes, but you didn't do anything that you know about. You just allowed it to change the way it is and the way it should be mm -hmm. because you, you put a tick in a box that said, no, I can do it. But it's not the fact that did it, it's you that did it. And this is what I keep uh, stressing to everyone. Everyone's okay. Mm -hmm. And there's really nothing wrong. Mm -hmm. And everything that comes into your life You can either accept it or let it be as it wants to be. And, you know, all the practical things are more practical if you decide to not go with them, but to do it another way. And don't ask yourself what that way is. Because if you, you concentrate on walking, you don't walk too well. You don't ask yourself how to I'm walk. goofy. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. And it's the same with everything. So we've always been okay. And the changes in the world are, are there because we decided, not because the world is changing. Uh -huh. It's always been there. And in my little book, Your Personal super, Supercomputer, I've taken a few little examples that apply throughout the ages that nobody's been looking at. And it indicates that we're much more than, than we think. You know, the number of people who've uh, been going to have an accident and it didn't happen, like a car's going to run into them and all of a sudden it's gone because the whole world did a bit of a glitch and made sure they were okay. That's been happening forever. But in fact, now we can look at that and say, I can use that. The whole world will change for me, but I don't have to demand it. I know that it will because I'm looked after. So it's a knowing. Yeah, it's, it's, 
a knowing that's not in your head. Mm. It's a knowing that's all around you. Yeah. It's not even in the heart? No, no. It's all around you. It's, it's, it's universal. It's consciousness? It's beyond consciousness because consciousness actually belongs to the person. Mm. But there is a conscious field, though? Conscious field's a problem because it's generated by a lot of pe people. Yeah. So you go beyond consciousness and you've got another part of you that goes into action without you saying a word as long as you allow it to. Mm -hmm. So that's the, the world beyond worlds mm -hmm. that we all know about but have never been able to describe. There's a space within everything that's okay. And we all know that somehow, you know, even in childbirth, that there's a space where everything's okay. So what do we call it? Do we need to call it? As soon as you call it, you've killed it. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's, it's something that belongs to us as uh, a human entity. We can't call it the divine. There is a divine component. But it's more than that. Like, you've heard of uh, the hundredth monkey theory. Mm -hmm. And you can apply that to animals. What do you apply to humans? We're beyond them, and that actually exists. Whereas somewhere in the universe, something changes, so do we. Mm -hmm. So that interaction is universal, it's uh, also local, and it is multidimensional. Are we dependent on it? No. This is, the, this is the funny thing. You can do what you like, but what will happen is you'll get better at things without even training yourself. So we have to just wait for things to come to us? You don't wait. You see, time doesn't apply to an entity. So it's an entity. Called humanity. Hmm. And it exists throughout the universe. Mm -hmm. In all sorts of forms. But the power of that entity, if you imagine it, you can feel it. Mm -hmm. It's enormous. Mm -hmm. And we forgot to use it. We feel it in our body. There's heat. Yeah. yeah. Everyone, everyone knows. Mm. But the description from each person is slightly different. So all that together is such that we never run into one another. So we have a individual communication with the entity that works perfectly and we don't have to oppose anybody. How do you deal then when situations, when some situations you don't like or what your partner does doesn't suit you or when your boss is treating you in a certain way? That's the, th that's the thing that belongs to the world of um, uh, logic. And in that world of logic, you're going to disappear because you're hanging on. It's just like chasing the garbage truck. Let it go. <laughs> Let it fall off the back of the truck. And you'll see that it's rubbish. You don't have to make it disappear and you don't have to attend to it as long as you can see that it's passing mm. or that it's bubbling through or that it belongs to someone else. The, the thing that happens to you is not so bad. Sometimes we feel it's... Uh, you were talking earlier of the field and sometimes we feel like we're thinking thoughts that are not even ours. Yeah, that's because we locked ourselves into uh, what we think is consciousness. So what you do is you shut off that part of you that's beyond everybody's access. So you shut off all the stuff that belongs to you so that someone can beat you to death. But if you leave all that open, whatever they try to do changes before it gets to you. So are you, are you pointing at authenticity and vulnerability and being ourselves here? Uh, no. <laughs> Great, good. <laughs> all that, all that was a teaching, uh -huh. and you know we're at a point now where um, that word should disappear because um, all the children know more than we do anyway. So what are we going to do? Teach them to be clones? Mm -hmm. No. Mm. Allow everyone to generate um, what they came here with, 
allow them to expand on what they came here with, even from when they're little children. But you've still got to have those guide rails so they don't fall off the edges. Exactly. So, so what's the access? I was trying to just see if authenticity, vulnerability too, are some of those access to this world or to this paradigm or to, you know, fully, to, to fully be ourselves. What's, is there a technique, a process, a way of being? Uh, uh, is it a matter of healing? Is it a matter of, how do you view that? All of those things are the result of people attempting to make a system, uh -huh. people attempting to make money, people attempting to control a situation or the future. Mm -hmm. If you look into the future, yeah. the present will follow you. Okay. I like that. <laughs> so you can't get the future from the present. But you, so can you have to be confident. Oh, it's, that, that is a byproduct. You can't, that's just like saying uh, to walk, I have to put a foot on the ground. What about the rest of you? Yeah. So that's a byproduct. Yeah. Yeah. But if you can live looking at the future all the time, the present, what they call now, will continue to change to meet the future. Mm -hmm. This is, this is um, the key to everything we do from here on in and it's not a practice i'm getting it but to see for how, how do you do it when you only see a future that is um, dark and negative for yourself well that, that's easy to get over okay. don't think about it <laughs> how about if it's chasing you well it's only chasing you if you're not looking at the future you know a wave can be chasing you but if you're sitting on the board and looking at where you're going it's magnificent you haven't changed the situation you've changed where you're looking yeah. and then the whole the whole balance becomes automatic because you're then in a multi-dimensional world mm -hmm. that has all these things that can look after you things what, what is looking after us well things like it will make the car disappear that's going to run into you and put it on the other side of you what does that that is nothing what that's how we are That's the world of magic and miracles. Uh -huh. And that's what's here for us right now. We've known about it, we've experienced it from time to time, but that world of magic and miracles is here to stay. And you don't have to look through any barriers anymore. You just decide, oh, well, I'll have that. So it's not a, even a belief? No, belief is probably the worst thing anybody can have because it immediately closes all doors. And it's working on the past, totally on the past. When you're looking at the future, the past is gone. It's fallen off the back of the truck. Yeah, yeah. Most, most of us, I guess, put our past in our future. That's, that's it. And so you go around and around circles. Mm -hmm. If you did that when you're driving, mm -hmm. you wouldn't get far. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> <laughs> so it's no different when you're living. Yeah. And you can have an interruption with someone because they want to put the brakes on. Well, you just take away the brake pedal from them. Let them put their own brakes on if they want to. It's not of your concern. Yeah. I think a lot of us feel also responsible and wanting to help. Yeah, and that's something we've been trained to do because someone said we can't do anything else. But in fact, the greatest thing you can do for anybody is to sit and listen to them. How about if it's super negative and you're like, oh my God, this is draining me down? Well, it's easy. You don't listen, just look like it. Yeah. How many times you watch the TV and the ads come on and someone says, oh, did you see that? And you say, what? Because you have this mechanism that you can look at things and they happen, but you really don't take them in. Not because you did anything. It's, it's a training by observation. But it feels inauthentic. Of course. Because they're on inauthentic. You see, nobody's got a problem. Why should someone make a problem up and give it to you? They really don't have a problem. And really, they get over it as soon as they get a loved one or a pocket full of money or a big night out. It's all gone. 
Uh, or if someone runs into their car, pfft, all gone. Mm. All they're interested in is killing the person that ran into their car. Mm. You see, they're all artificial, made-up things. Mm. And I always used to say to somebody, uh, you know, you think you've got problems? Hang on, if I kick you in the shins, where are all the problems gone? Straight to your shins. Mm. So they, they're not real. The reality is is in the multidimensional part of us and the signals that we get every day. The things we listen to, they're real. You know, you run into a wall, those things stay there. If your dead relative is visiting you and something goes wrong, they're still there. Everything else is gone. So the reality that we're living in uh, is, is what we're all about. It's not... A reality that we make up it's one that we can't see this is the mystery of who we are though it feels like we're though co-creating or the reality that we're living in is is what we're projecting so we're living only that when it's when it can be something else yeah it's 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 not even something else it's the thing that holds all the things that we build so if you live with all your resources All your magic, all your sparkles, all your mystery, the world follows. You know, I said a long time ago that the feminine would come here and change the world at the moment. And isn't that happening? Yeah. Aren't you all feeling different? Aren't you all feeling you don't do it that way? Yeah. And it's changing. And that is what changes the field changes the electromagnetic field because you're transmitting not just positive but that same massive energy that says no one will touch my child and the world goes oh okay so that's the power that's coming into the world and that only has to get a little bit stable and that stability is is here in every moment where you're not disturbed So where does it come from? It's here. So don't get disturbed. Uh, distraction comes from what? It's usually what you built in the past mm -hmm. or what somebody else built in the past. Everything is, it forms a, a force in the universe. It's just like if you walk through the supermarket and somebody's been having an argument and you're feeling really sensitive, you, you go, oh, I've got to get out of here because they left that smog. Well, if you take the millions of people over the millions of years that they've been here, they've developed a force, which is like a big truckload of dung, you know? Mm. And people have been using that to dump on one another mm. over the years. And all you have to do is go to another dimension where it doesn't exist. Tell us about those dimensions, how they're interacting with each other. First of all, everyone can create a dimension. I like that. <laughs> you like that? Oh, my God. And the, you know, if you're all sitting around a table and there's 20 of you, you can single out one person to talk to and nobody else knows what you're talking about because you created a dimension. A closed circuit or something. Yeah, it's, it's like the cone of silence. <laughs> And we do that all the time. So, How do you manage all those conversations happening at the same time then? Yeah, and you don't. <laughs> <laughs> That's just how the, our nature is. We have a communication system that is universal. And it, it actually is a multi-channel multi-frequency uh, and multi multilingual communication system. So how do we tune into the to the good stuff? Well, you don't. You just, you know, every time you need it, it's there. Yeah. Like you notice when you go to different countries, you hear people talk a language that you don't, you don't know, but you do understand. Yes. Where does that come from? That's part of us. Mm. That's just one little example. So true. I did the other day an interview in Barcelona. The guy was speaking Spanish. I've studied little Spanish. I could understand everything he was saying. It was weird. And that's the advancement that we're looking at. Yeah. 
they're the things that are part of the magic. And you look at a little child, can send you a message of exactly what they want in about two parts of a second. You know they don't, you, you know, they, they don't even talk. And you know that uh, what they're going to be in the future, how they're going to be, what you're supposed to do around them, a whole lot is transmitted in that fraction of a second. Mm. But we don't look at that as our skill. We look at we just take notice and walk away. Mm. But if we get that picture that they send to us and we welcome it into the world, we've just made a, a space for them in the world. And that's why we're here, to make a space for everybody's future and the specification they send us. And the part that we know about them, we offer to them at the times when it opens up. Now, Robert, I know that the co-creators watching this video are thinking, where did he get all this information from? It's not information. <laughs> it's always been here. And it's just an observation. And it's not observation by the mind. It's an observation from a distance. What and do you mean by that? Yeah. Well, you can distance yourself in a fraction of a second, right. particularly if someone doesn't appeal to you. Take that to the limit and distance yourself beyond the earth and look back at yourself. There you go, instantly. And everyone can do that. And what that does gives you an uncluttered view of everything. And you actually see the birds and you see that they appear when they decide to appear. It's not up to you. Their dimension will let you in or not let you in. Children see fairies. But the fairies don't let us in unless we're in the right vibration or we're looking from the right dimension. So it's a vibration and two questions. It's a question of raising our vibrations? We've already done that. So that's done? Yep, that's over. That's a good news. Okay, that's, let's not even go there. No. <laughs> that, we did that. Oh, I don't know. In the time going up to about 2003, the vibration was the big thing and it needed to change. Everybody's still teaching that, but it's over. That's the old paradigm teaching. Yeah. You feel that there's a new paradigm of teachers or even teachers? I know that tell us what you think of teachers, of the word teachers. Yeah, well, teachers doesn't work for me, yeah. but the new paradigm is the young people. We feel every age is, is it does, it's not significant, it's not related to age either, right? No, but they just arrive with the new book, with the new information, all the stuff they could see from other dimensions. Mm. And they haven't had it um, programmed over yet. So we, we had a, a sequence of over-programming where our natural program uh, is not turned off, but it is overwritten all the time. It's the natural healing uh, of our body. You know how they fix people if they have a major accident. They sedate them and will put them in a coma and the body fixes itself. And we didn't look at that. That program, that base program, it works. So if we do nothing, we're better off than if we do something. Mm. Until you get a few young children around and you feel okay and you don't know why. Mm. It's because there's another layer, another thousands of layers that they haven't shut off yet. And that this is not new, but what it is, it's now available to all of us. So if we would like to help um, other people, to, again, I mean, it's going back to a previous question I had, but how do you uh, help help people to... Just to be in that space then? You can't really then. The biggest help is to do it without them knowing. When you know that someone's going to be okay, you've done a bigger job than trying to get them to change something. So they can go and hurt themselves or do whatever they want. Or they can go and try and hurt you. But if you can see the future and you can see that you have the power to change that, And you only do it once. 
You don't have to do it all your life. So you, pr you project the image of the future? Are you tuning into the future then? You, you see it? You visualize it? No. no. You, you just know it, but you know it from an area where you can't see. It's like saying to you, if you want to, you can see fairies. And you go, yeah. And I say, do you see them with your eyes? No. Do you feel them? Of course. And there's more than that because it's, an, it's a whole other feature about each person that we don't have words for. So it's a case of, if you've got to use words, you've got to use the word, the unknown. So when you include the unknown in your life, you've got more resources mm. than you could ever imagine. Mm. So it's, it, it's kind of bathing in this mystery, being okay with the unknown. Yeah, yeah. And knowing that's where you come from. That's the best part of it. Because when you know that's where you come from, you just get that buzz through you that lets you know that everything's more than okay. Even when the house is falling down, everything's more than okay. Yeah. The, the, where, where does the healing take place then? I mean, or can we, can we still, is it, is it in, this, in this paradigm, in this, on this, with all these changes, can we be in contact then with healer and receive energetic healings and all of that? I mean, what's up with all those different therapies and what is your point of view on all of those teachings and all those things out there? They're all useful, but it's, it's like... Um, Do you go and sit for the examination for your license before you go and drive the car? You had to have it at a particular time, but you don't have to do it all the time. Mm -hmm. And it's got to be there for the next person coming along. Mm. But each time you drive, there's something else there. And to access the part of you that can drive and not remember a thing, but know that you were totally safe and you could tell what was coming around the next corner and who was behind you, that's the real part of you. So all I'm saying is let's be the real, the real us mm -hmm. uh, that has the magic mm. that we never talk about mm. and let's talk about having the magic mm. and then it's all okay for everybody. So if we all say, I knew that person was coming around the corner and everyone else says, oh, great. And then they relate similar things. I knew my child was going to do this, so I made sure that they were safe. Uh, I felt that person about to ring me and have it in your life. Talk about the magic that really happens. And then we're all living it. And the focus that drags us all down is the one that we all won't talk about. And it might be finance for a lot of people. So you talk about it and you talk about the fact that, wow, I thought I was broke yesterday. I just got a free gift. <laughs> Or I didn't have to go shopping. Someone brought some, brought a meal around. Mm. And then the magic continues. And you've heard of people opening their cupboard and finding food there that they didn't put there. This is all possible. Mm. And this is the way we're supposed to live. Mm. So the, the world of magic and miracles is way beyond what can be written in uh, words. But it's doesn't even touch the edge of what we feel. So what is a miracle? It's the expectation um, declined. Say more. <laughs> Say more. So we expect something to happen and the universe says, no, I don't accept that. We have all these laws that we've figured out and the universe says, well, we don't have any laws. There's no laws in the universe? No. There's only laws from where you stand. So the only way you can relate anything is because you have a reference point. 
I thought there was co cosmic laws that were kind of compared to, to human laws. I, and human laws fluctuate and are not reliable, but I thought cosmic laws were stable. Only stable from one point. It's, it's, it's like if you're traveling in an airplane, you, you walk at two mile an hour up along the airplane. But from down here, you're walking at 700 mile an hour. So it's all relative to where you are. Mm -hmm. And if you're a universal being, and you can be anywhere, and you know that, um, what reference do you take? There is none. You can, if you want, take any reference at any one time. So you'll find that you're flicking around, and that's like making a, uh, uh, what do you call, uh, where you have a, an image in midair. A hologram. So the more times... It was Barbara that we heard there. <laughs> <laughs> the more times you visit some place or you visit some picture, the more times you get a, a different perspective. Well, if, if you're able to access a trillion visions in a second, you can have all the different viewpoints such that you get a true picture and you're not getting a one-sided, one-point picture of anything. Mm -hmm. And that applies to everyone's actions, everyone's thoughts, because we receive everyone's thoughts, we receive their words before they're transmitted, because we know if someone says something to you, you say, oh, that's not what you were going to say. And we all know this, but we don't look at it. So it's a matter of each looking at it and being able to say to somebody, that's not what you were going to say. And they say, oh, you're right. Instead of going into an argument. Oh, so, I like that. Yes. That's not what you were going to say. <laughs> Give me the good stuff. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it's all been here before and it's all simple. Mm. But we're now able to see because the vibration has changed yeah. and because the electromagnetic field that you all put out is now in coordination with, um, yeah, I'm, yeah, I can say this, the, the world is moving towards being a galactic star. Hmm. We don't have a definition for that. But it puts us in a whole different place as far as perspective goes. Mm -hmm. And... Um, that makes us feel more evolved. <laughs> Yeah, I, I've said for years that uh, when we're finished here, we'll be pleased to wear the T-shirt that says, I come from Earth. Uh -huh. <laughs> because it's going much, much further than any place it's ever been. Are they all watching uh, us? Oh. Saying, what are they doing? <laughs> <laughs> of course. And it's not just watching. They walk amongst us. Mm. And but it's up to us at the same time. Political creation? Actually, no. Because it's, it's the action of the entity that involves everything and everyone. Mm. It, it would be like me saying, well, I'll make the leaf of that flower look like this. It doesn't... I don't have control of that. Mm. But I do have control of the fact that I can water it and watch what happens. Mm. So that word of of create needs modification a bit mm. because uh, yeah you can create the growth that leads to a unique thing but you can't create the growth to lead to something that's been there before mm. doesn't yeah. happen yeah. so you can see how the brain gets programmed yeah. and it says well oh, I, I can see that I want that instead of saying I can see that I can see if I develop the same thing, I wonder what it'd be like. Yeah. Then you can go for it. But if you go for attempting to do what is already there, you'll find restriction because the universe doesn't work like that. And once you do build it, it will fall over if you build it the same as anything else because it's past. It's got no structure to hold it anymore. Then there's a lot <laughs> to have fun with, I would say. Yeah, so 
in all of this, you don't remember anything. You know that the storage is already there. You don't bother about whether you're right or wrong because it's hard work to be wrong. And life flows beautifully without you measuring it. Mm -hmm. I like it. So there's a, there's a lot in everything if you try to put it in words, but the main thing that I really expressed in what I live is life is beautiful. It's entertaining. It's more than what you see. The feelings that are bestowed on us from time to time are magnificent. And we all know how to party. Tell us about your personal journey just for a second, because I think we didn't get to that point, but it's it's important, and I feel that we're, we're all asking ourselves that question. So what happened to you? Have you always been like that? Where do where, where you come from? <laughs> I've always been like that, yeah, but not, not all the time uh, that this body has existed. I came in... Uh, 1986 Why did you choose that body? I didn't It was an agreement That uh, Was made by many And At the time I thought it was premature I hadn't been trained I really uh, Struggled with How to work a body How to live in the world What the hell are all these people doing? Why can't they see? How long did it took you to adapt? Various areas, different times. Um, it took five years before I could even say I lived here. And then about 20 years to settle all the interactions, the previous body and personality was involved with. Because clean up needs to be done. Yeah, it's not clean up really. It's it's allowing people time to accommodate the fact that I'm different. Yeah. That takes a lot of time in some people. But did that happen through an accident, through an NDE, through a particular experience? I mean, where the other soul went? Yeah, I had a major car accident. And <laughs> magic car accident. I love major. that. Oh, I thought you said ma magic car accident. I like that too. I mean, yeah. it is in some way. <laughs> Yeah. Big way, actually. <laughs> yeah, it was. <laughs> and it took a long time before I knew uh, that, that I was different because I didn't know anything about anything. They just uh, said that I had brain damage. But in fact, um, it was that time I was getting used to everything. And as soon as I got used to it, I could see uh, the moment that I came in and everything that happened. <laughs> I was, same as everybody else's story, standing outside a car, total silence, looking in through a spiral, and then all of a sudden I'm in the body, trying to figure out how to make it work. That was a very frustrating point, mm. trying to make it work. It was a bit tight, huh? Yeah, and I couldn't get it to move. I, was, I remember looking at my hands and wondering, how do I make these work? So, you know, there's a lot behind all that story, but... That's just another story that has happened to many millions of people. Mm -hmm. And there are a lot here that come from other places. Uh, there are a lot that don't even know that they... How can change. we know? Well, you don't need to. As long as you live who you are, that's the best you got. And that is the sum total of all your experiences mm. sitting here right now. Mm. So why would you want to worry about any of the rest of it? Do you remember how it was there? Yeah, yeah, every day. But it's not a memory like you have in a human sense. It's a sense of comfort, a sense of knowing. Uh, it makes you feel um, part of the, the whole universe instead of just a person that doesn't fit. And... It's great to see the same thing in other people. Because mm. I, 
often look in people's eyes and, and they go, whoa, what was that? Because mm. it's the recognition that recharges everyone mm -hmm. and allows them to get on with what they're doing. Mm. And a lot of people call it um, a project or a task or whatever. And that's good to have them words, but as soon as you name it, you've just restricted yourself. Because then you've got all these things to do to make that happen. Instead of saying, well, that's how it appears at this moment. It might be different in five minutes. Mm -hmm. Last little word, Robert. I know we all want to hear a lot more from you, and I'll be doing some more interviews. I just can't help it. This is it. You know, this, is, this is what I'm looking for. These are the new interviews coming and coming. More of this new paradigm and the teachings and this energy is, is very welcome on this planet from all of us. So thank you. And last word, Less something that you feel uh, is important to say right now? I think, I think the biggest thing is that everyone understands they are magic mm -hmm. and they are beyond anything they can imagine mm -hmm. and there is no how about accessing it as long as you see that you are more than what you see, mm -hmm. you will be. Beautiful. Thank you. And if you want to read Robert's book, you have your personal supercomputer. It's very, uh, not many pages, no. but very powerful little book. Yeah. And then you have the big one, and you're writing the second one right now, but yeah. this is the volume one of The Magic of Life, my delicious co-creator. So if you want to read this, there it is. And I guess you travel the world? Oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing. Let's just flow. Big kisses. <laughs> Much love from beautiful Santa Barbara, California. Bye. Bye. Thank you, Robert. Thank you. <laughs>